there are like two windows through which we look at the world. The world they look at is the same, but what they see is, is quite different. I am Francisco J. Ayala. I am a professor at the University of California here in Irvine, and my main field is genetics and evolutionary biology, which is what has become my main interest in you know, the study of human evolution, where we come from and how do we explain what we are. I won the Templeton Prize because the uh, jurors in their wisdom decided that I was the person who is thought to have contributed significantly to the development of the spiritual values of humankind. I was a student of theology for five years, but already towards the end of my third year, my fourth year, I have become very interested in studying human evolution and evolution in general and genetics. Well, it was an unusual term, it's not very common, but it is not extremely unusual either. Um, I eventually didn't practice as a priest in the usual way, but I remain very interested in theology and in religion and the religious issues. As the years went by, uh, you can say either matured or uh, changed my mind or whatever, I felt that it was more interesting for me to, to become a scientist. Science and religion are not in contradiction. They don't need to be because they deal with different subjects. They are like two windows through which we look at the world. The world they look at is the same, but what they see is, is quite different. Science deals with the composition of matter, the expansion of the galaxies, uh, the functioning of organisms, the origin and diversity of organisms. Religion deals with uh, the meaning and purpose of life, with the relation of people to their creator and to each other, with the moral values that inspire our lives. So they are completely different subjects. Contradiction arises only when people transgress their boundaries when scientists would argue that science makes it uh, very likely that God does not exist, which of course is a nonsense statement uh, because science cannot say anything about God. Or more often when religious people for reasons like literal interpretation of the Bible or otherwise denies the accomplishments of science. Keeping creationism or intelligent design out of science classes is very important for two reasons. One is because there is a lot of science to teach. We should not be teaching something else. For another reason, that to the extent that they, we may imply that these uh, matters are scientific, we do harm to science and do, we do harm to religion as well because it's conflating two areas which should be kept separate and it's not good for either one. So we don't want to teach astrology as an alternative to astronomy, or witchcraft as an alternative to medicine, or alchemy as an alternative to chemistry. We don't want to teach intelligent design of creationism as alternatives to evolution. They don't belong in there. Certainly for a scientist, an evolutionist like myself, looking at the world and the beauty and the tremendous diversity and richness of the living world and the magnificent attributes of the human species and other organisms, that can be a source of religious inspiration. And, and of course, um, religious motivation is sometimes, uh, are sometimes grounds for scientists to, to go on with their studies. So I think they can complement each other. Science is a very interesting way of knowing, but it is not the only way. And, uh, you know, science has nothing to do, for example, with aesthetics or, or with beauty or with morality. Um, and for many people in the world, those matters are more important than scientific knowledge. But the moral norms, the moral principles, the moral codes, according to which we decide what is good and what is evil, that does not come from science. Moral values come from other sources like religion or, or cultural traditions and the like, or social preferences. There are certain moral values that one can see as being intimately associated with the real world to an extent that we can say 
they, they are moral facts. It's not something that comes from religion or culture. For example, not to kill. I think even about that, there are cultures, many more in the past, but even at present, who believe that you can kill or should kill under certain circumstances. Um, sometimes circumstances that we will not justify. But even in the United States, we have the, the death penalty. There are many countries in the world, most of Western Europe, who think this bar a barbarian. Cloning, in a way in which many people refer to it, is the cloning of full organisms. I think this, in principle, a good thing, because actually farmers, animal breeders, try to do that, have been trying to do that for many ways in an imperfect way by for example, selecting a bull that produces good uh, progeny and then having all the calves in the herd being inseminated by a single bull, so they are genetically as similar as possible. It's a kind of approximation to cloning. We can do it now much better with science. Now, cloning human cells is okay. Cloning human beings is not, in my view, all right for a number of reasons. The first one is technically you cannot do it. Uh, and I don't mean that the, technically s the techniques are not sufficiently developed. I think that it is impossible in principle because the people who think that you can clone human beings are people who think that what we are is determined by our genes. But what we are is not determined by our genes. It's determined by our genes in interaction with the environment. And the environment for me started in my mother's womb, and then was when I was raised as an infant, and then as a child in Spain, and the schools to which I went, and the studies I did, and who were my friends, and, and uh, you know what were my activities, and then I came to the United States. And all those experiences determine what we are. So if somebody were going to take my genes and create another human with those genes, it will be genetically identical to me, but it will not be me. Why in the world would you want to clone a human being? One of the great attributes of humankind is the diversity that we have. We don't want to have a herd of identical individuals. Our diversity of uh, personalities, appearances, styles, and desires, and everything else is the, one of the great gifts of humankind. I can choose in the next minute not to talk to you or say something very kind or very obnoxious. Some philosophers argue that free will is, does not exist. Humans have free will and they are the only animals that have free will in my view uh, because we are the only animals who have a kind of exalted intelligence that we have which allows us to explore alternative courses of action to anticipate the consequences of our actions and other ways in which we exercise our free will. There are many religious people who are also scientists and that see religion as science certainly as not in opposition and more, if anything, with pos having possible areas of complementation. But I think a majority don't think about the issues. There are many religious people who are also scientists and many scientists who are religious, and others who may not be, many religious people are not scientists, but they don't think antagonistically about, the, about science. They simply don't think about the issues. And that's true also for many scientists. Most scientists are not thinking about their compatibility, the compatibility of the science with the religion. <laughs>